MPs will meet in Parliament tomorrow to press the government to seek compensation from Libya for the victims of IRA attacks. Libya supplied hundreds of tons of armaments to the IRA for its campaign in the 1980s. Until this summer, IRA victims had used legislation in the United States to seek damages. But as Carl Dinan now reports, that avenue has been blocked. The soldier on the war memorial in Enniskillen is for those who died in war. The 11 doves around the side are for those who died in the act of remembrance many years later. On the 8th of November 1987, the IRA exploded a bomb here as people gathered for Remembrance Day. It contained 40 pounds of Semtex. The Semtex was supplied by the Libyan government. Until recently, the victims of this and other attacks were in the process of using the U.S. courts to sue the Libyans for damages. But in August, America signed a deal with Libya, finalizing compensation for the victims of the Lockerbie bombing, about $10 million per family, and setting up a fund to compensate other American victims of Libyan-sponsored terrorism. Before the deal was signed, a bill was rushed through the U.S. Congress. The bill said that if Tripoli were to pay into a fund to compensate the American victims of Libyan-backed terror, then the United States would block anyone else from seeking redress from Libya through their courts. And that has infuriated the victims of atrocities like the Enniskillen bombing. The bill was proposed in the Senate by the man standing beside Barack Obama, vice presidential candidate Joe Biden. There were no hearings, public or secret, there was no testimony. There were no uh, statements on the floor of either house. There were no votes in a committee or on the floor, recorded votes. And the bill passed both houses within three days with a total of about 30 seconds of discussion on both floors of the House of Congress. Olive Bustard works with the survivors of the Enniskillen bomb. Her brother, Ronnie, a teenage soldier, was killed by another IRA Semtex bomb. He couldn't have survived what he would have gone through. He was totally beyond recognition by any of his comrades. At the time, the family received 300 pounds of government compensation. They believe Libya should still be held to account. Money doesn't make justice. It's not that money at the end of the day. But, you know, the way I'm looking at it is, why should one lot get at the expense of the other. Of Libya's armed shipments to the IRA, one was intercepted, three got through, supplying all of their Semtex. The 141 victims who've had their action against Libya blocked aren't just angry at the Americans. They think the British government could have done more. And Channel 4 News has learned from victims that the Prime Minister has written to their representatives saying the UK would not pursue Libya because they are an essential partner in the fight against terrorism and it is in the UK's interest for this cooperation to continue. Libya has answered questions about its involvement with the IRA to the satisfaction of the UK government. Sir Kenneth Bloomfield used to represent the victims of the Troubles, and he nearly was one. The IRA planted four Semtex bombs around his home when he was Northern Ireland's top civil servant. Two went off, and his family had to be carried out past the unexploded devices. The Americans seem to have taken a different line. They seem to be satisfied that their relations with Libya are on a better footing than they used to be, in spite of the fact that they have pressed for the establishment of a compensation fund out of which their citizens damaged by Libyan action can be compensated. So, I mean, it's just interesting to reflect on the difference between the two situations. And, you know, should there be that difference? I think there's a big question mark about that. Others are more forthright. Jeffrey Bloom was seriously injured by the Baltic Exchange bombing, which also killed three people. We, the survivors, we, those who've lost loved ones, uh, are cross that the UK government seems to be doing precious little uh, to repair what Bush seems to have found it necessary commercially, as well as he thinks politically wise to do. The Foreign Office, US State Department and Libyan Embassy all declined our requests for interviews. Meanwhile, the remains of the Libyan Semtex have again been used, this time by dissident Republicans, most recently this summer in an attack on two police officers near Enniskillen. Carl Dinan in Northern Ireland. After the break, photography, he said, is just jazz for the eye.
From Chet Baker to Frank Sinatra, William Caxton, who died today, captured California's golden age. We look back at the iconic images that will become his enduring legacy. Right.